morning. Welcome all of you to this 10,000 teacher empowerment program. Uh, I am tempted to say a few more words about this uh, methodology itself because this is something unique, first time in the world and uh, really delighted that you are all part of it and that we can scale it up even further and empower every one of you to be able to deliver lectures through this for your students and also for your friends and so on who may not have access to good teachers, good instructors. So, let us get started. Uh, I am going to uh, give a talk on uh, introduction to Scilab and in fact, I have two subtitles says use Scilab not MATLAB, use FOSS not commercial software. So, I will explain to you uh, why that is so. This is something uh, you know very close to my heart. How do I how do I plan to organize today's talk? I am going to spend some time on the importance of open source software. I will introduce and explain the usage of Scilab, compare Scilab and MATLAB. In particular, I will tell you what questions you should ask and what questions you should not ask and why it is unfair for you to ask a few questions. I will explain that. I will point out the Scilab resources and uh, uh, spoken tutorials uh, effort. I will compare other open source software systems and a brief note on LaTeX. I am also going to be visiting a few centers tomorrow. I am going to be in all these cities tomorrow, day after tomorrow and Sunday and I am likely to visit these remote centers and then get to interact with the participants in these centers personally. I hope to bring an Akash tablet also, so that you can see what it looks like and if you have any questions, I will be glad to answer them. Let me come to one of the most important slides in my talk. Why Scilab? Why Scilab is important? Why FOSS? Why free and open source software? Why it is important? As a country for us, as a nation, why it is extremely important? for Indians. Commercial software is very expensive and uh, you know this is something that most academicians, most people in academia do not realize it. Either these are available at low cost to colleges or even if students you know use some copies without purchasing, the companies seem to turn a blind eye. Of course, that is something that it is a societal problem and any amount of policing and so on will not solve the problem. So, because of that we do not realize that the commercial software is expensive, that is the key thing. The key thing is that the commercial software is extremely expensive. I will explain this with the story from here. In fact, I want to tell you a story, true story that happened in Italy. There was a multinational company in Rome and it was caught using one illegal copy of Microsoft Office. There was a raid in its premises. They found one illegal copy of Microsoft Office, only one, only one illegal copy. Microsoft was going to take this company to court and there were going to be serious consequences, dangerous consequences. So, they came up with an out of court settlement. What is out of court settlement? They have to measure, they have to count the number of computers that this company had, not only in that building, all buildings in Rome, all build, all, all its branches in Rome, Italy, Europe, all over the world, count the total number of machines, multiply by per copy commercial cost of this. I can tell you that it was a very large amount and it was several million dollars, perhaps of the order of 100 crores rupees in today's exchange rate. So, it was a major penalty that this company had to pay because the alternatives were lot more dangerous. So, this is for one illegal copy of Microsoft Office, which is not very expensive. So, now I will tell you a story about Scilab. I was teaching a course 
on embedded systems in this very same hall, I think it was about 3 years ago and uh, there were 25 students in the class. They were all M Tech students and PhD students in computer science. So, I asked the students whether anybody had used Scilab, because I was going to use Scilab for data acquisition and control, I was going to demonstrate its use. Out of the 25 students, only one raised his hand, only one raised his hand. So, I scolded him, why did he use Scilab? Then it turned out that he had joined IIT Bombay after working in industry, unlike all other students who had joined immediately after their B Tech. They finished B Tech or M Tech, they joined for either M Tech or PhD, they were pursuing higher studies, except this particular student who had raised his hand, he had worked in a startup on startup that worked on embedded systems. Okay. Small company in, in Pune. Now, many of these embedded system companies, many of these startup companies are very small in number. They have small in number of people they have. They typically have 4 or 5 people, they can get together, go bid for project, get a project, build an embedded system. What is an embedded system? Well, it is available in this projector, it is available in the computer, it is available in the air conditioner. In fact, it is available in your washing machine. It is, in fact, uh, you know, it is ubiquitous. You look at a car, modern car, it has many embedded systems. The embedded system is something very common. So, it is possible for a company to bid for a project, deliver it, and then pocket the profit. And these are all small companies. They can, you know, typically work with at most one or two projects. So, they have very small turnover, small number of people, but very large profit margin they have the potential to grow. Now, they are extremely important because it is such companies that, that provide employment to major number of people in India, small and medium scale enterprises. Of course, startup is the beginning point. Um, I want to tell you that we possibly have about 1000 such companies in Pune region, 1000 in Bangalore, 1000 in Trivandrum, 1000 in uh, Calcutta, Chennai, Hyderabad. I mean, I am pretty sure that we have at least 10,000 such companies in India. So, this guy who raised his hand to my Scilab question in my class had worked in that company before coming to IIT Bombay for higher studies. He wanted to use MATLAB for his work in embedded systems company. He went and asked his boss. His boss told him that MATLAB was too expensive for the work that they had in mind. Okay. And what is the cost? I want you to think about it. If there had been an interactive viewer here, I would have asked you and you would have answered some questions. But I can tell you, he, the amount that he told was staggering. How much it would cost for this company to buy MATLAB? So, his boss told this guy, it would cost 2 crore for that company to buy MATLAB. And so, he told him MATLAB was not affordable to this company. He said use C, Java, assembly, okay. use whatever, use whatever that is freely available, but not MATLAB. If you insist on MATLAB, please resign and go. We do not want you. Okay. So, that is when I started enforcing the use of Scilab in my course and I insist that all assignments be done only in Scilab. And if anybody solves using MATLAB, I give them 0 marks. Why? Because I want, I want to train my children, my students for the industry. When they go to industry, they will not have access to MATLAB. But SILAB is something that they can easily get. Now, another story. Well, actually when I was talking about this, uh, one of my uh, uh, project manager in the project of one of my colleagues, Professor Kavi Arya, he came and told me that um, he had a similar experience and uh, essentially they also had a startup. They were trying to develop a software that would help locate videos on the basis of emotions like bhakti, 
anger, laughter and things like that, based on that it would locate. Of course, it depended on Fourier transform, signal processing, filtering and things like that. And then they gave the job to a professor and that professor delivered that product, they were ready to launch. Then they found that they needed a special license because that professor had used MATLAB and this person told me that he had to, he found out that he had to pay 1.5 crore and being a startup, they could not afford it. And in fact, as a matter of fact, they started doing the whole thing, redoing the whole thing in Scilab. But in the meantime, Google came up with a similar product and these people had to close down their startup because for a startup, unless your first product clicks, if your first, if your major product fails, then you are doomed. In fact, he closed this company and joined IIT Bombay as a project manager. So, I have um, corroborative evidence of that. One of my uh, project manage, one of my students who worked in Hindustan Lever summer training, he said they had only one copy of MATLAB in their entire facility. Anybody who wanted to use MATLAB on that day should come at 7.30 and occupy the chair and nobody else can use MATLAB on that day, right. A friend in Wipro said that they also had a copy of MATLAB, but it was network licensed and you have to book your slot. I am going to do it from 4 to 7 next Thursday, right, you will get the slot. When I was talking about Indusan Lever, this I was telling the story to the project approval board of the National Mission on Education through ICT, which is funding this initiative. Um, National Mission on uh, Initiative, National Mission on Education through ICT was started by MHRD in the year 2009. The objective being to raise the levels of education in the country, okay. And one of the, uh, you know, projects in that is Talk to a Teacher project and it has two components. One is this 1000 teacher training program, which has now morphed into a 10,000 teacher training program and spoken tutorials. I will talk about spoken tutorials a little later. And of course, Akash is also sponsored by uh, this mission itself. I was giving a talk in the project approval board of this mission. It was chaired by uh, Mrs. Vibhapuri Das, who was the secretary at the time of Department of Higher Education in uh, MHRD. So, the mission director, Mr. N. K. Sinha asked me, Professor Kandan, please tell something about Scilab to this audience. There were IIT directors, there were vice chancellors, there were uh, other uh, uh, joint secretaries and so on from various ministries. So, I told the story of Hindustan Lever that they have only one product, only one copy of MATLAB. I told them that if only they switched over to Scilab, they can use it at home, in the office and while traveling. At that time, we were only dreaming about Akash, right. And, but still, we said that our dream was that we would load Scilab onto Akash and make it available. So, I was just telling the audience there that we might have about 1 crore children having Akash in the future and we want to give them a computing machine, computing engine, computing software, right. Imagine giving MATLAB to all of them, how expensive it will be 1 crore copies, right. And Supposing the students illegally download and install, will MathWorks like it, right? Even if MathWorks does not mind, second question, even if MathWorks does not mind, how do we teach the children how to break the lock? How do you teach 1 crore children how to break the lock? That is the second question. Third question, would we want to teach our children how to steal? 1 crore children, children in schools. If on the other hand, if only we switch over to Scilab, have Scilab installed on Akash, release it, launch it, the students double click and Scilab starts working. Like we have done here, like we have done, we have already launched Akash with Scilab running. So, that dream has come true, it has taken 2 years, but it has come true. So, this is what I told, right. Scilab is extremely important. Our small and medium scale enterprises do not use any software because commercial software is expensive. By the way, I forgot to tell about Wipro. I told this Wipro friend, 
what will happen if somebody brought an illegal copy of MATLAB into their premises? He said three things. First, he will be fired. Second, he will be put in jail. Third, there will be a court case. Why? How many computers do you think Wipro has? Apply the Italy model of penalty. Wipro will go bankrupt. Right? So, it is a serious, serious business. Okay? Our small and medium scale enterprises do not use any software. If big companies do not Industrial liver uses only one copy, Wipro has only one copy. You can imagine what will happen to other companies. Commercial software is very expensive and they are not aware of open source software packages because the blame is with us, academic community. We do not train our children on open source software. So, that is the reason why we have taken FOSS free and open source software as an important project, as an important project of this mission. In fact, it is the effort of that activity that you have Scilab now available on Akash. Right? In fact, I am going to show you some resources that we have created for Scilab. Let, let me go to Scilab. So, let me just complete this. It, this makes our small companies uncompetitive in, uh, because you know just imagine uh, what will happen if Scilab is available, if our, our companies, let us say we have a company that generates simulation software. Okay. Suppose ISRO floats a tender or General Motors floats a, ten, floats a tender or any company floats a tender to create a simulation software. There are some companies that have created using MATLAB. There is this one startup company from India that has done it using Scilab. Now, which is going to be cheaper for say General Motors to use or any other company to use? The client if they go for a MATLAB based solution, they need a copy of MATLAB, but if they go for Scilab based solution, they do not need anything. So, this is going to not only you know the use of proprietary software makes our small companies uncompetitive, it they also become uh, it also becomes a very attractive value proposition for these small companies. So, I would like to conclude this very important slide by saying that there is absolutely no alternative to open source software. Let me go to Scilab. Now, the main theme of today's talk, Scilab is a good substitute for MATLAB. It has about 95 percent compatibility. Now, I will explain to you uh, the history and that will explain why you have such a high compatibility. What is Scilab? It is free and open source, it is easy to use, it has excellent computational environment. For example, it has LINPACK, ICEPACK, LOPPACK, these are some of the most outstanding, most reliable software packages available in the world for doing, for solving linear equations, for computing eigenvalues and so on, same as MATLAB. MATLAB uses that, so does Scilab. In fact, it is also possible for Scilab to use several open source software packages that by licensing requirement may not be available on MATLAB. For example, suppose there is a software that says you can use me provided you are also open source software, then MATLAB cannot use that. Right? You have a whole host of those software packages that can run on Scilab, but not on MATLAB. Scilab is created for mathematicians. By the way, whatever I am going to say now about the capability, whatever functionality of Scilab, it is applicable also to MATLAB. So, even if you do not believe me, even if you do not switch over to Scilab, you want to continue to use MATLAB, does not matter. I want to help you also. Some of the commands that I do may be useful to you also. We will see that. Matrices and vectors can be created easily, no typing, storage allocation, etcetera. Matrix vector product, scalar vector matrix product, uh, scalar vector, scalar matrix, matrix vector, and so on, products are written without any fuss like the mathematicians do. In fact, Professor Cleve Moller was a mathematics professor in New Mexico State University. In fact, I think uh, I am going to talk about it in the next slide. It was created, uh, MATLAB was created by him. Scilab also belongs to the same family of software packages. Okay, here is the history of uh, Scilab. Professor Cleve Moller created MATLAB through NSF funding. As government funded, the this source code had to be 
made available. By the way, I am talking about the work done by Professor Klee Muller in the late 70s and early 80s. I am telling you about something that happened more than 30 years ago. He had written MATLAB through Fortran. That is the reason why the indexing in MATLAB still continues to start from 1, unlike C, where it starts from 0. As government funded, the source code had to be made available. That Fortran code was available. In fact, I also had downloaded and installed it. I had downloaded, compiled it on my PC80 and installed it. I am talking about uh, what happened in early 80s. I think it was around the year 81 or 82. I had downloaded MATLAB Fortran code, compiled it on my PC80 machine and used it. By the way, do not even look for that code because that was long time ago. Uh, you know, whatever you have now is lot better. For example, the commercial MATLAB now is completely rewritten in C. Okay? But of course, they have retained that indexing from 1 okay, to be compatible with the earlier versions of MATLAB. When Professor Klee Mahler made this available, many companies found this to be a great idea. So, they said uh, there was a product called Matrix X Control C. And in fact, I made a comparison of these in the year 1985. At that time, Matrix X was better than the commercial MATLAB. And but I said at the time that wait till the wait for some more time, the commercial MATLAB would become a lot better. And as expected, the MATLAB commercial MATLAB uh, became a lot better product. Okay, Scilab also came from the same um, source, namely the original MATLAB. And uh, that is the reason why all these things are very similar. That is the reason why there is a 95 percent compatibility between Scilab and MATLAB. I forgot to tell there is another product called Octave. It came little later, but Octave also is very similar. It is open source. Um, uh, it is a uh, lot more compatible with MATLAB. Uh, maybe it is 99 percent compatible with MATLAB. But uh, in my opinion, being compatible and maintaining compatibility are serious problems because Octave people, development team will spend all their time in making Octave compatible with MATLAB and MATLAB can jolly well keep changing the way it looks and feels, works and so on from version to version, so that you are forced to buy new versions okay, and other developers are forced to keep pace with that for various reasons. Of course, there could be other important reasons, but uh, you know keeping being 100 percent compatible or 99.9 .9 percent compatible has its toll. In fact, we recommended, we had organized a Scilab national conference at IIT Bombay. Um, it was uh, funded by uh, DST and CFIPRA. The Scilab team had come from uh, INRIA at the time, uh, led by Claude Gomez, uh, the president of the Scilab uh, consortium. He had come and uh, so, he asked his audience, there were about 250 people in the audience, he asked, we spent a lot of time trying to maintain compatibility with MATLAB. We are not able to develop software of our own. We are unable to develop our own applications. What should we do? So, the whole audience, all the 20, 250 people raised their hand and said, please, you know, forget about compatibility. Whatever compatibility you have is good enough. Okay? If you do not have compatibility in some functions, does not matter. We will work with what you have. Right? So, being 99.9 .9 percent compatible is not a great advantage. It may appear as an advantage, an advantage, but it is a great disadvantage. You cannot do new things. So, Scilab is 95 percent, still Scilab is 95 percent compatible. You will see as I, as we go along. Scilab is used extensively for linear algebra, simulation, control system design, so on and so forth. Scilab can call programs written in Fortran C. It has a good graphics capability. It has a large install base. Uh, if I am not mistaken, about 1 million downloads happen every year of Scilab. A lot of algorithms implemented in the interpreter language as well. It is free and open source. You can develop your own algorithms. You can develop your own executables. You can launch your hardware devices with executable and so on. You may want to check out Scilab.org or Scilab.in. So, I have opened uh, some tabs. I just want to show you this is uh, scilab.org, scilab.org, and uh, you can download 
Scilab here, you can uh, for Windows, you can download it for other systems. For example, it is available for Linux, Mac OS X and Windows. It is available for all three popular systems. If you want to install it for Windows, if I am not mistaken, you have to be on the internet. It will look for internet connection because some of the tools have to be downloaded from somewhere because uh, it is not possible for Scilab to bundle them uh, as a part of Scilab. Okay? But for Linux and Mac, it is available, you can download and install and it has uh, lots of nice things, uh, documentation, Scilab for high schools. Uh, it also has, uh, you know, if you see products, you have Scilab, lots of this, uh, not sure how easy it is to see here. For example, other, let me see, partner external modules, Scilab complementary modules. So, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, can it do this, can it do that and so on and so forth. There are thousands of applications and it is not possible for me to be able to answer your question. So, if I do not answer your question, somebody had asked, can I use, can I use Scilab in network simulation? So, I am not an expert in network simulation at all. How can I answer your question? So, please do a web search, please do a Google search. Google is the best, web search is the best, internet, just do a search. Okay. So, you can see lots of these things. Of course, what will happen is, if we start discussing, if the 9000 people start discussing, then maybe if you ask a question, somebody in Srinagar may be able to answer or somebody in Agartala may be able to answer. Right? So, it is important to realize what questions we should ask and what questions are difficult to get answers for. So, these are some of the things, each one is a toolbox. So, I would suggest whenever you have time, please go to scilab.org and then search and see what is available. Then we have scilab.in, we have lots of nice resources. I will explain these using this Moodle. So, by the way, this is our course web page, this is our course uh, Moodle uh, page and if you see in the main page, I just logged in you see all of this and I have one section here called information on Scilab lab session. We have provided lots of information here right? and there are some questions I have already told that these are available, yet some people ask, I cannot locate the link. All that you have to do is come here and look at it, all the thing is available. For example, this is, uh, this is linked to discussions on Scilab labs and Scilab use. So, you can see that there are lots of question and answers. And there are some answers given by, for example, here is uh, answer to uh, a question posted by one of our Scilab team members. Okay. Our Scilab team members have also started answering your questions. Okay, let me go back here. So, that is the Scilab uh, labs use. Scilab India web page. So, if you do that, it will take you here. All Scilab activities are available through this web page, this is Scilab.in, which is nothing but. And then we also have repository of documents in Scilab. This is a very nice uh, uh, facility that we have. It is available at this place, links. Okay, now, I want to ask a very important question. How reliable is Scilab? Scilab is after all open source software. You know, I want to do my thesis work, I want to do this, I want to build a product, how important, how reliable is it? So, I want to give some, uh, I want to uh, show this. There is a company called CNES, there is a corporation, French organization. You can think of it as Francis Isro, CNES launches. You may not know Arian, uh, CNES, but you would know their product, Arian rocket. Okay, you know that we have launched our rockets, our satellites through some of the American rockets. We have also launched many through French rockets. Those are Arian rockets and it turns out that CNES relies on Scilab for many critical calculations. I will see if I can show one such talk. You can see that use of Scilab for space mission analysis and flight dynamics activities, Terry Martin CNES and he says, 
Skylab is now widely used, widely used in CNES in various engineering fields such as telecommunications, RF analysis, navigation, attitude control system analysis. This presentation explains how Skylab is used for flight dynamics activities with selected examples in mission analysis, all kinds of things, right. So, here is the, uh, this is the use of Scylab for space mission analysis and flight dynamic activities. He is a senior manager at Cherry Martin uh, at CNES. Uh, in fact, he gave this talk in the very first Scilab user international conference. It was held in, uh, uh, in uh, France and I was the keynote address, keynote speaker in that conference and my, uh, the title of my talk was the open source software in the national mission on education through ICT. This was in 2009, July 1st, okay. I was chairing the session when Mr. Martin gave this talk on Scilab. It was very impressive how they used Scilab for so many things and how basis, based on those calculations, Ariane rocket is launched and that many of our satellites are placed in orbit and how you are listening to me now thanks to some of those satellites. So, my question to Mr. Martin was, it is amazing you seem to be using Scilab for everything. Do not you use any other software? That was my question. So, if somebody says Scilab does not work, do not believe them, they are lying. They are lying, okay. It is, uh, it is, it uses LOPAC, okay. That is the best for computing eigenvalues, for computing, uh, you know, solving a system of linear equations, okay. Now, I will explain the usage of Scilab. The way I have done is, my commands will be in black, the answers given by Scilab will be in blue. So, let us go and see Scilab, 4 plus 6 plus 12, 4. plus 12, it is 22. You can see that 4 plus 6 plus 12 is 22. Um, so, my questions are in black, the answer given by Scilab is in blue. Now, I ask this question, A is equal to 4, B is equal to 6, C is equal to 12. Let me do that. A equals 4, B equals 6, C equals 12. Why does it not echo B? Yeah, that is because it is, there is a semicolon. You can see that B has, after 6 we put a semicolon, so it is not displayed. So, this is extremely useful when you have lot of things, lot of calculations. So, what I will do is, I will rely mainly on uh, slides, occasionally I will show you in the Scilab console. So, if I do A plus B plus C, although it has not displayed B, it is still there. So, if I say D equals A plus B plus C, what is the answer? Yeah, it is 22 as expected, okay. Scilab has demos, that is uh, help, you can call some plots without uh, arguments, uh, you can use diary command. I am not sure how many people use the diary command. It turns out that most people do not use a diary command. It is an extremely important command. So, in view of that, let me do that. Where are my program files? Okay. I should go to a place. All right. The only thing you have to make sure is you have to make sure that you will be able, to, you have right permission. Um, so, obviously, when you are going to create a file in Scilab, you will be working in an area in a directory where you can save file. So, it is fine. So, let me just say diary test, okay. So, what it will do is from now on, whatever I do and whatever answer given by Scylla will go into this file. You do not have to remember anything, okay. So, it is called test. So, let me just say A equals 1 through 5, use this my command as well as input and then I say diary 0, save the file. I do not know whether this will work, let me just see because I do not use windows, but this is a windows machine. How do I see the files here? 
directory. Okay, you see this test. Okay, I'm not sure how to open this file. Okay, maybe I can open it using documents and settings render. Here it is. There it is. Can you see this? Remember a equals one through five. I typed and I said diary zero. It closed. So all the transactions that you do get saved. All the transactions that you do get saved. So typically, typically what happens in a what happens in uh, Scilab is you use only about you know a lot of things are created by trial and error. Only about five percent of the commands finally work. Then what happens to the remaining ninety-five percent? How do you pull out those five percent? You create a diary file. Entire transaction is there. Just go and delete all unwanted lines, all the commands that didn't work. Just delete them. You have a working script. So you have a script. You can convert it into a function and so on. So I tell all my students: as soon as you open Scilab, open diary. That's the first thing you should do. Open diary. Okay. That's a slave. That's monitoring all that you are doing. You don't have to remember. You don't have to. Have a notebook, write down things, because diary is key thing. So diary is very important. So we have done some of these things. Um, here I am calculating uh, one by root two, and then this is sine inverse x. Mind you, this is in uh, radians, so I want to convert it into degrees. Multiply by one eighty divided by pi. Notice that pi is percent pi. One by root two x. Sine inverse, you get this, and then convert it into degrees. That means multiply by 180 divided by pi. Remember, in Scilab, you have to do percent pi. In uh, MATLAB, you would say just pi. So percent pi is. So there are some minor differences. So this is um, a vector is created one through five. Look at b. B is one through nine in increments of two. So it becomes one. To three, five, seven, nine. Imagine doing this in C. It would have taken some number of lines of code, and you can. If you want to append this, just append it B A, and then one, three, five, seven, nine, nine for B, and then A comes here. Of course, some of the things that came at the end are lost from the slide. This is something that I wanted to add. What is? Let me go to Scilab console. B is. One through ten. Okay, I've got this B. Now I want to say, um, what is B of one is to two is to ten? What will this do? Just want you to think about. This. What will B of one is to two is to ten do? Okay. Those of you who are familiar with. Uh, MATLAB will know the answer to this. The key thing is to say what is one is to two is to ten. One increments of two go all the way up to ten. C equals ten in increments of minus one all the way up to one. Okay. Now I'll say what is C of C of one is to two is to nine. So one is to two is to nine will give me these one three five seven nine. These are to be applied to C. So you'll have C of one, C of three, and so on. Let me just see. C of this, C of one is this, C of three is this, C of five is this, and so on. Imagine doing this in C. How many lines of code would it have taken? Here you can do it very fast. Okay, this is what is B of one to five. You can append things. You can uh, subtract a scalar from a vector. If you want to do it in C, you may have to do some extra calculations. Here it is straightforward. Similarly, you can multiply a vector by a scalar, subtract a vector from another vector. You can do all that. There's logical operators. This is something I want to ask. A is one through five. Okay, B is five minus a. Right. Now I want to ask this question: T F equals A equal equal B. 
what does this do? I am asking is A equal to B? I am asking whether A is equal to B. That result is stored in a variable called T f. Now, what is going to be the size of this comparison? It is a vector being compared with another vector. So, the result will also be a vector of the same size and each element will have the comparison result. We can see that nowhere is it comparable, right. So, let me do this again. Let me now ask is A greater than B? What will happen? It will be false, false and then true, 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 false, false. You can also do some more nice commands. So, in uh, Scilab, let me do the following. A is equal to, let me create a matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 0. Now, suppose I want to create B equals A of 3 increments of minus 1 to 1 and here I want to say okay, rows have to be starting from third row. Just imagine let us, I will give you uh, about 10 seconds for you to think about what this will do. We are not interacting right now, but just see how and see whether what you have thought about agrees with the result that I have got. Essentially, it flips the rows, starts from the third row, third row is 780, it comes here and then 456 and then 1, 2, 3 and then the columns have not changed. Now, I can work on columns also. For example, I can say columns 1 in increments of 2 to 3. So, what this will do? It will take the first column and third column just taken the first column and third column. Imagine doing this in C, imagine doing this in C, you know, how many lines you would have taken. So, that is the reason why I say scilab is to C is like C is to assembly, the high productivity thing. Capability comparison, people ask MATLAB can do this, can scilab do this? First thing they ask, if I tell them please use scilab, what do they ask? Can it solve network problem? Only then I will use. So, my question is, is that a right question? Okay. MathWorks has 2000 employees, Scilab has only 23 people. Right. MathWorks will keep coming up with a new version. You have a MATLAB version that is 2 year old, it is too old, you cannot use it, you will not get upgrades. Every 6 months there will be a you know new version, okay. every week something will be added. On the flip side, you have to pay their salaries. You have to pay salaries. So you buy salary, you buy MATLAB, pay the salary. Another question: Is MATLAB really required for class students, undergraduate classes? Do you really need MATLAB? You want to solve differential equations. You want to solve optimization problems. You want to plot, right? You want to do control problems. You want to do data acquisition and control, signal processing, filtering, and so on. Do you really need MATLAB for all? Please use Scilab. That is good enough for all class students. In fact, there are more resources that I am going to show them to you, right. That is good enough. Suppose you have a research paper that has to be submitted within one week, it requires MATLAB toolbox. Please go and use it, I am not asking you to stop it. All that I am saying is, I do not want you to go to your class and say, I use MATLAB in my research, so I want to use MATLAB in my classroom, do not say that. That is inflicting MATLAB on the unsuspecting public. Please teach Scilab to your students. Let students know Scilab. And knowing Scilab does not make them, uh, you know, reduce their job opportunities. It is a lie. If somebody says that if they know only Scilab, if they do not know MATLAB, they will not get jobs. Absolute lies. They can, if they know Scilab, they can pick up MATLAB in one day, they are going to get a job. Absolutely no problem. Do not insist on using MATLAB in your regular first year classroom. Do not insist on using MATLAB for your filtering labs, signal processing lab, image processing lab, please to use Scilab for that. This is what I said, you should know what question to ask. Okay. First thing people ask, can I do this, does it have an optimization toolbox? If 
the answer to that answer to that should not decide whether you will use scilab or not that is a different question it has nothing to do with the choice of scilab you should use scilab irrespective right let me talk about resources okay, i'll come to moodle so i said that uh, repository of documents on scilab okay so you have something called links here if you see links see given below are some community related links so you can see general if you click here then you have lots of things and these are all related and each one will take you to something and i said that there is a very nice here thing called last one sila for real dummies it's a ppt it has about 1000 pages in this i strongly recommend this but you have lots of things through this links i suggest that you add your links you rate them and so on okay i wanted to see the show you the moodle page scilab lab session so here we have um, you can download scilab there is scilab.org scilab for dummies it's an amazing resource you may want to take this uh, this is the talk i had given earlier but now i will upload today's talk link for scilab spoken tutorials are here i don't know whether this will work so i'm not going to link this checklist for pc infrastructure this is the link this has a file that has information on what you should do to run spoken tutorial workshop on scilab okay uh checklist for pc infrastructure this is something what is available here checklist for pcs one day before workshop on spoken tutorial by the way the remote center coordinators in your centers should go and check for every pc is the pc booting can they log in is scilab loaded is spoken tutorial copied does it play on plc this has to be checked for every pc and put a tick mark your remote center coordinator should have done before today if not please every remote center coordinator please do that otherwise you will not be ready to do the workshop today okay this is something how to organize scilab labs lab session this afternoon how to do that your um scilab spoken tutorial workshop in the afternoon will make use of this scilab instruction sheet your lab your remote center coordinator should take a print out of this and give it to you give to every one of you 9000 people before the session starts if you don't have it then your remote center coordinator has not done the work please insist on that okay we need the pcs in working condition you need the instruction sheet you need headphones if you have it we are in business you can do the workshop in the afternoon okay there are some sample questions for tomorrow uh some feedback form is given we want you to uh, fill this maybe after the workshop is over scilab textbook companion i uh, showed this okay what are the scilab resources the moodle page of this course scilab.org scilab.in the links page in that textbook companion page in that lab migration page in that i didn't tell about lab migration i didn't tell about textbook companion textbook companion is something in which your students can contribute essentially take a standard textbook code all the worked out examples using scilab we have now 100 textbooks available on our web page it has procis it has uh, image processing books it has um, control books it has fluid mechanics books civil engineering books it has lots of books 1000 textbooks with worked out examples solved with scilab code scilab code available you can actually download code for a specific example and run it if you download only code required for that particular example will come you can run it if you want of course you can run you can download the entire code for the whole book that is also possible but we don't insist on that you are saying signal processing dsp by procis say i am going through example 5.3 i want to download you can jolly well download the code only for that and execute right the other thing is lab migration our team is ready to help convert your labs from matlab to scilab okay once again this information is available 
on our web page. Okay. Please see the web page and if you have any questions, you post them. Okay. Lab migration, this is available in scilab.in. Okay. We have a dedicated team that is doing this. So, these are some of the scilab resources. You see that many of the things that we are doing are to increase the documentation for scilab. Right? Because the problem in open source software is there is not, there is a lack of support, there is a lack of documentation. So, this is one support. Another important activity for documentation is the spoken tutorial. Right? Here, here is the spoken tutorial web page. We can see that uh, study plans are available for many software packages. Uh, we also have a new website, you may want to check this out. You will see here uh, many more tutorials, this is slash new and uh, in fact, uh, what you will see is uh, tutorials in Sanskrit for example, uh, you will see tutorials in Urdu, you will see tutorials in uh, Bengali, Tamil, Telugu, of course, in Hindi and English all of them are available, I would want you to go and see that. Okay. So, uh, spoken tutorial is uh, an activity through which we uh, will uh, conduct uh, uh, workshops, but that can also be seen as another documentation project. We have in the events uh, are organized, I love workshops or self workshops are organized by close to 15 member team uh, and then Scilab team also has about 15 people. I believe that there is a large number of people who are interested in doing LaTeX. You know, what I suggest is um, LaTeX spoken tutorials are available on the internet. You can download them, links are available. But I, I just want to show you this. This is a book that I wrote, uh, Digital Control. It is published by John Wiley and Sons in 2007. And uh, this is written completely in LaTeX. In fact, if you open it, it will say that it has been typeset by the author in LaTeX. It has about uh, 1000 equations, it has lots of figures, right? And of course, you do not have to buy this expensive UK edition. It has also come in Indian edition, uh, it came in Indian edition in 2009, and that edition comes with Scilab code also. This one has MATLAB code. This was before I met that student who was working for that embedded systems company. Okay. All the code is given in MATLAB, but the Indian edition has Scilab code, all code in Scilab in CD form. Right. So, uh, that is all I can say about LaTeX. Uh, so, in case uh, if anybody wants to do this, uh, you are welcome to. Uh, I will try to see if I can uh, show Scilab running on uh, Akash. I just got it now. Uh, in view of that, uh, instead of waiting, let me go to the conclusion. I will conclude and then come back to this Akash. So, open source efforts are not only idealistic, but make economic and commercial sense as well. Okay. These efforts have a potential to empower all Indian children to collaborate and make us a developed nation. IIT Bombay is working on several open source projects. We invite you to join us. So, looks like uh, I just got this. Uh, funding for our work is given by ICT, National Mission on Education through ICT MHRD Government of India. Here is an introductory spoken tutorial on this. Okay. Thank you.